Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. You have reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is episode 111. You can find all of our show notes over WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, here we are. Oh. Another week. We're a week it's, in. Since, uh, it's this- a brave new world and only in a week. Um, uh, uh, you know, as we're preparing for today's episode, which is being recorded on March 20th, in case you're listening in the future version right. uh, of this episode, we posted some things last week and honestly got to change them and update them today. And I've got some new information to cover and uh, some really great, I really am excited, Matt, to go through, you know, I've been sitting here thinking about we're not in exactly the same place we were 12 years ago and when the housing crashed, but people are just running with so much information and it's the unknown that's got everybody anxious, stressed, and people are getting laid off. And however, I really feel if we can put some things into perspective and I we're going to cover that today and a huge shout out to the Tom Ferry organization and Keeping Current Matters. They put on a really great webinar I'll have links to it in our show notes, and I'm going to pull out some of those slides today and help us all have some perspective of how this is not then. Today is not then when we no, had and a horrible I think one thing that we always, Yeah, we need to really remember is that that when that happened before, it affected every. It affected a lot of people. It didn't affect everybody the same way. And this is uh, this is more uh, a consistent. Uh, problem that we're having now it's kind of affecting everybody and very closely right. the same way so it's a very different very different uh, playing field than it was back then so we're going to give it some perspective today and again it, things are changing hourly daily and uh you know we'll go from there because by next week i'm sure we'll have an update as well right yeah, yeah. and on today's then we're going to uh, go back and uh, figure out how we can get a little zen while we're in the house here it's so been so much fun actually watching Facebook and seeing what people are doing. I mean, there's so many people that are, you know, having reading time where they're reading to people on Facebook. And, you know, I see parents doing things with their kids. I love it. And all that. it there's just a lot of stuff going on. So we're going to, you know, we're going to stay where we uh, are at home and that's in the National Park. So today we're going to uh, really just talk about and give you a lot of links to videos where you can feel like you're, uh, you're, you're, you're out there doing your wandering. And, and here's the thing. This is, we don't know how long this is all going to last. Uh, but at some point, you're going to be able to get back out there and start doing your thing again. So why not start doing a little planning or explore some places that you always have wanted to go and kind of start, you know, maybe not set a date for it, but start putting your plans in place to get out there and start wandering again. So all right, let's jump. can happen. There is. And I just think that we're going to talk more today about, uh, you know, I'll get into the real estate sp- stuff. We'll, we'll really t- give it, everybody some perspective. Got a great script to share uh, that Tom Ferry shared and, and wants everybody to to share and take, and I love it. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you that, and I'm gonna t- totally tell you to go back and watch that if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's about an hour long, but it's well worth it. It was just yesterday, so it's really updated information. So uh, let's jump in and talk first about real estate updates. How you can still be productive, get a lot of things done, stay connected to your to your people and your prospects. Uh, and you know, carry on, adapt to what's happening and carry on. I, I just really feel that we're always, said it last week, Matt, I just feel that regardless of how long this all takes, it is an event, it's a moment, it's, a, it's not a crisis, it's not like the mortgage crisis that we went through that really took a while to recover from. Just think about it, one of the things that was said uh, that many people are saying too is that when you think about how long this takes and we get through this, and we will, uh, how everyone will just, it, it reminds you of like 9-11, how everybody stayed in and, you know, we're afraid to travel and all of that. And then we, we're going to go back out. We're going to get back into the restaurants. We're going to go out. We're going to be, if we're stuck together for a while, for months or a few months or whatever, everybody be ready to get up and get out and go back and start spending money and, and bring it all back. And the people that are losing jobs will, will need to be able, they'll, the workforce will need to be back in in play, right? Uh, but but we don't really know the whole, you know, until we see what's going to happen, how the government's going to help out. That's the unknown. That's why everybody's worried. But we're going to talk about some of the things that are already happening to help people. 
so that it's not a massive crisis today. And I think know? people will just appreciate things maybe just even for a short yeah. time, a little bit more, because I'm telling you, there's a couple places that I could already just, my taste buds start wa uh, watering when I think about oh. it. Yeah, when you, when you don't have the freedom to do exactly what you want to go That's do, and you're like, wait, right. hey, I can't stop in that restaurant right. right now. But it is, right. it is, it's powerful to see what's happening. So uh, the good stuff that's coming up with people, as you've been saying. So let's jump in and we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, updated real estate amid the COVID-19. All right. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, as we mentioned last week, we, we jumped into adapting, staying calm, adapting, and carrying on. I'm going to continue with that theme, but I just want to go with some updates today. So last week I talked about you've got to be informed. So I've added a few additional resources this week. And to be that trusted advisor, I think this is one of the most important things that we need to do. You have to stay on top and have credible sources where you're getting your information so that, of course, around the virus, it's got to be the CDC, the World Horse, uh, the World uh, Horse, the World uh, be <laughs> Health. Health Organization. Um, there's a there's a really great interactive COVID nineteen map. If you haven't seen it, uh, I have a link to it that is updated in real time. And it's really interactive, and you can see it on your mobile. And and if you really wanted to track the numbers and look at that, you know, and you're into that, uh, we have that up there for you. Uh, somebody shared a great YouTube video with me and we shared it with our group that was from, I think it was PBS or yeah, it was PBS. an epidemiologist. Yeah, that was just really the basics, the science behind how a pandemic happens and why it is so critical to to shelter in place or to stay home. I guess California announced last night, it's uh, the governor said, stay home, right? Yep. What, what are they calling it? The campaign is, you know, stay home yeah. as opposed to shelter in place. Uh, so. We got to we've got to flatten the curve, as they've been saying. We got to do our part. Doesn't mean we have to stop connecting and doing the things that we need to do. So there's that. So I talked about housing wire last week. I want to add to that calculated risk blog. Uh, I've also I followed both of these during the last major recession crisis uh, that we went through. And today I'm really going to continue talking about how I don't really believe. I believe what I've been looking at. I've had a gut feeling about this. You know, we have people that have equity positions. It's not the same. It's a great article. I'm going to go through the five points and share some graphs and stuff with you today to help everybody kind of realize we're not exactly where we were last time. The sky is not falling in the housing market. OK, so if you check out Calculated Risk Blog, that is really on economics, finance, housing market. Excellent stuff, as well as Keeping Current Matters. I've, I've been following these guys at Keeping Current Matters from... Uh, several years, but I'm telling you right now, they got some really great stuff, and I have you definitely want to go check out their recent articles. Uh, and I'm, as I said, I'm going to spotlight one of them today. To you know, they were fantastic during the last downturn, keeping current matters. I used to totally. read them all the time, as far as you know, repurposing their blog posts is really good stuff. Yep, and I definitely recommend that, and I really recommend Tom Ferry. Uh, I have been following Tom Ferry. I think he stays relevant. There's a lot of other real estate coaches and things out there. Uh, but he's got a powerful mechanism to get the word out to people. And if you haven't watched it already, go to his Facebook page. We have a link to it. It was something they did yesterday, kind of an emergency webinar with the guys from Keeping Current Matters. Mm -hmm. And it was excellent. So the first part were, were all these graphs and charts about, you know, what's really going on. I'm going to share some of that with you today. And they're saying, you know, go get this stuff and share it and use it to educate each other, but educate your clients. Okay. So, I mean, nothing sp speaks better than facts and figures, not speculation and all that. Right. And then the second part of that webinar is Tom Ferry sharing, you know, five key things. And basically we talked about the same type of things last week on what we're talking about now, stay informed, you know, uh, be empathetic and caring and be of service when you're talking to your clients, but he does have a great script. And I want to share that script with you uh, today. And, uh, and I think, I think you take this script and, and everybody loves the script and modify it to your own use. When somebody asks you, how's the market is what his script was. All right. So there's that, check that out. All right. So let's dive into, I'm going to go through five simple graphs proving, uh, this is the article from keeping current matters, five simple graphs proving this is not like the last time. So the very first one on their list is uh, I've got to, yeah, I've got to, well, I'm going to leave you here in a minute uh, right. for those of you that, for those of you that are listening, I'm going to be describing the graphs, uh, but if for the video, you're going to be able to see them. And we're going to actually have these graphs and a link to where you can get the whole article 
and then way more graphs and charts that they went over in that webinar yesterday to really get the total picture. But these were the highlights for me, and this article is excellent. So I don't have a graph right now for this one. So number one was mortgage standards are nothing like they were back then. Remember, Matt, we were in real estate. You were in real, we were both in active real estate. We, we haven't ever been out of active real estate. That's right. But, dur but during the housing bubble and leading up to the 2008 financial crash, it, it was not difficult to get a mortgage. Everybody was over extending themselves, getting a hundred percent financing. The mortgage standards have shifted. You know, I think we maybe learned our lessons. We're going to talk about that here in a minute because Fannie, Freddie, and FHA are already going. All right, we got to hold on here. As a matter of fact, let's talk about that for a second because that's already come out. Fannie, Freddie, and FHA have announced they are basically doing a forbearance. That was one of the things that finally started happening when everything went to hell in a handbasket last time in 2008 uh, or in the last you know, big recession. Again, I don't wanna keep comparing it to that because I don't think it's, it's, it's nothing like that as these five points are gonna tell you that. Uh, so they have already said you know, for the next 60 to 90 days, people don't have to make their mortgage payments now. They don't get forgiven. They just put it on yeah. the back end. Push now the, the reality is it's not as easy as just not listen. It sounds awesome. But we are talking about institutions and government and it, you have to go through your lender, your loan servicer to find out if you qualify. It has to be a it has to be a, a, a reason for it. There has to be a, a hardship, which would be like losing your job. So these are things for us to be aware of as we're making con connecting with our clients to say, hey, what you know, what you have an FHA loan. Are you aware of this? Go talk to your you know, when you're checking in with people, you could go find out if they can have a little relief. Same with folks that are renting. Uh, in most states, and maybe that'll happen on a national level, there are there can be no evictions right now while people are going through this. Doesn't mean that they're not going to have to pay their rent or work at something out, but we don't know exactly what that looks like. Maybe there's going to be something to help the people that are landlords. Again, these are all the unknowns, right? Yeah, so, things are going to continue to change daily. Much, much harder to get a loan now. Okay, so that's number one. Not everybody that could breathe got a loan. And then, of course, what happened? Many things happened. But one of the things that happened was all adjustable rates. Yeah. And then uh, houses went up too high. They came down. People owed more. And then we got we had the whole sh the crash and the whole short sale debacle, especially here in Vegas. So number two, prices are not soaring out of control. So if you're listening, what I'm showing for the folks that are on the video is six years ago, leading up to the housing crash, prices were really appreciating. That was the whole thing. People, and this is a national graph. And this, and if, if you were in Las Vegas, this was higher than what you're seeing on this graph with you know, uh, annual appreciation of 12.5%, 11.4%. It was higher in Vegas and other places. Right now in the last six years, it's pretty steady. It's four you know, four to five percent. Okay, so that's the first thing that we want. The second thing that we want to say. The next point is we don't have a surplus of homes on the market. We have a shortage. So back in 2007, month supply for homes was 8.2 months. So it was really like a perfect storm that happened. Besides all the horrible lending practices that went on, and we were all part of that if you're a real estate person listening, because we individually, I went out and bought another house on an 80-20 loan that I had to short sale later. Everybody was into this and prices were going up and nobody thought the bubble could crash. And of course it did. But back then there was over eight on, an, on a national basis, eight too many homes on the market. Now across the country, we've been dealing with a shortage of homes. 3.1 today, that's national. It's lower in Vegas. It's less than two months supply in Vegas. All right, next is houses became too expensive to buy. So the, uh, that's what happened back then. The price, people sort of got priced out. That's how they were getting into these price homes that they really couldn't afford because they were getting these adjustable rate mortgages that were getting them in lower. The mortgage rates were around 6% then. Now they're about 3.5%. So you know that's part of why people went out and bought all that. And then the last thing I really want to share here that's super powerful is, this is the thing I've been saying all week, Matt, is that um, people have equity, okay? So what happened last time is people were using their, I and mean, when I think about, we used to teach short sale certification. People were tapped out because they were using their equity as an ATM. 
pulling money out, buying things, buying other houses. And this all, of course, led to when prices like, you know, people are going, wow, I, I have another $20,000 in equity in the last two months. This is never going to end. Let me go take some money out and I'll go buy another house or I'll go buy these other material things that, you know, a new car or this or that. It was crazy. So that was happening. So check out this chart and if you're and you'll be able to see it in the show notes. But it basically shows back then, eight from 05 to 07, there was a total of equity cashed out across the country of eight hundred and twenty four billion dollars. Now, so far here, 17, 18, 19, it's 232 billion. Some of their statistics over here are showing that the good news here is uh, prices have risen nicely. But right now, over 50% of homes in the country have greater than 50% equity. So let's just think about that for a second. Um, now, I, I said last week, people were not going to get into a short sale market overnight. It will take a whole bunch of these things happening, which we already just mentioned why we're not really there. Now, if this went on forever and people didn't have uh, money you know, to, to get back to work and the government didn't step in and they were hurting in that way and the, the, in the restaurants and all the things that are closed. That's the issue we're dealing with right now. But will we recover from that in however many months? Yes, because we'll, we'll go right back to it and we'll, it'll, there'll be this lag of getting caught up, but we're going to get right back to it, you know, in, in pretty much most experts' opinions. So the issue here is it would have to go a long time and a lot of things to happen to have the uh, house prices come down drastically. People get behind in their mortgages, not have some kind of plans that I would pretty much feel that the government's not going to allow that to happen again in, in some shape or form. So we'd have to have all that perfect storm again to get back into a short sale market. Now, does it mean that people at homes might not try to take money out? Yeah, that might happen. So we have to pay attention to that, right? If it goes, if it's, it's if it's extended. All right. The last thing that I want to share is this, and this is. Uh, this is really eye opening. So a recession, which everyone is basically saying we're in a recession. And if you get the definition of a recession, it just it just is talk. It doesn't have to be massively crazy. It's just a change in the behavior of consumer spending and, and uh, the GDP growth and all that over time. So but this is what we need to see. Recessions happen all the time. Corrections in the market. Right. But if you take a look out of the last five recessions from so back to, I think that's 80, 91, uh, 2001, and then of course 2008. Three out of five of the last recessions did not affect housing. In fact, housing increased. It was only in the perfect storm we just sort of compared to of 2008, everything leading up to 2008 and uh, you know the banking crisis and the financial crisis. Then overall properties were down um, 20%. Now, hard hit areas like Vegas and parts of Florida and others were it was way long, way lower than 20%. Right. So I find that super, uh, super uh, powerful to, there you go, you're back. Uh, five great points as to why we're not in the same thing, but put it into perspective, we have equity. We don't know how long this is all going to last. We don't have those other things happening. Now, reality, people are losing their jobs. Predictions, uh, you know, depending on who you're listening to, if, if things don't turn around quickly, there could be a couple million people applying for, um, what do you call it? Unemployment. And that, Un that is, unemployment. That's scary. Yeah, how that has just spiked in the last week has been phenomenal in a lot of states. But if it's been crashing uh, their computer systems, it's been so. so well, and that's, that becomes the problem. People, it's all sounds good. We're going to roll stuff out. But how do people always get that? And that's the whole logistical nightmare and backlog. Right. It's just especially if people are going to try to go get a forbearance on their mortgage. Sounds awesome, but you're going to have to be vigilant. You're going to have to help your clients stay vigilant. Maybe, you know, be there to support them and, and let them know those things. OK, so there's some perspective on on uh, the housing market, how we may be OK. All right. We may be OK. There's opportunities. As we said last week, people still need a place to live. You've got to help people and figure it out. So let me go into some updates on connecting with your clients and your prospects. you got to keep them updated. So we just gave you a whole ton of information. You could go grab all that information and, and put some videos and blog posts together to say, Take a deep breath. I know you're in, and be empathetic. Be of service when you're calling them to not uh, it's certainly don't be predatory and like, how, do you need to sell your house or do this? I'm going to help you with this uh, a different approach here. And I'm going to paraphrase uh, the script here and in, 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 uh, that Tom Ferry did 
went over, which I just totally love, but you got to be in touch with people. So we talked about using your CRM, mastering your CRM, reaching out to people using video. Uh, how about send out cards, right, Matt? We we're fans of send out cards yeah. that what a great opportunity to send something heartfelt to your clients to let them know you're thinking about them and whatever you're deciding to do to give back and help and so forth. But I'm going to paraphrase this, this script. Okay. So if you are talking to your clients, and they may they may ask you, hey Matt, what so what's going on with the housing market? What's up with the market? Here's here's what uh, Tom Ferry went over. You know, Matt, it's day by day, hour by hour. Some of uh, my buyers and sellers are telling me to pause. Just they want to sit on the fence for a minute, and I am a hundred percent behind them while I'm keeping them updated on what's happening in the market. Okay, brilliant. Pause. Next. And some of my clients, Matt. Uh, need to buy or sell right now. So uh, this is what I love. So we're making that happen with protocols in place for safety, smart marketing, virtual showings, and more. Think about that. So exactly. I mean, that's that's just like perfect. So if somebody's asking you what's up, you could modify that script. But more importantly, Matt, how are you doing? What's happening in your family? There you go. So what we don't do is if so that script is if somebody asks you what's in the market, love it. But you don't call your people up and go, hey, Matt. Uh, you know, some of my people are buying and some of them are pausing. So that's a beautiful response if they ask you, how's the market? Or, hey, what's going to happen to my house? And now we just gave you all this other information that you could share with your clients about, especially here in Las Vegas. If people have lived through the two, you know, 2005 through eight, that whole thing building up and, and gone through that, then they're probably going, holy crap, are we going to you know, lose? Or, but people do may have the need to sell. So you can use this, but you could just call to check in with your clients and they're inevitably you're going to get into a conversation and there's a beautiful script. Yeah. Now you inevitably are going to find people like, as a matter of fact, we're really thinking that we need to make a move and how can we do that? Well, that moves into this next piece that we talked about last week. And I'm just going to reinforce, you have got to do virtual meetings. Now, last week we gave some advice on holding open houses and that was, now everything has changed since then. Don't do open houses. You can't do open houses. We're sheltering in place. We're all doing the right thing. You've got to use tools like what we're doing right now. We're using a Be Live program. You could do Facebook Lives. Uh, you've got Zoom. I, I don't know. Zoom is handling the capacity. Uh, if you had stock in Zoom, you're doing good right now. Okay, because <laughs> sure. because Zoom is is seriously uh, easy to use. Of all the stuff Matt and I have ever used, it's the easiest to use. You can get it for free. You can get a free version of it that will allow you to have a 40 minute. Uh, you can do one on ones, but if you want to have up to three people where you're talking to a group of people, you're limited to, to 40 minutes. And then it's only 15 bucks a month and you can have up to 100 people. Now, why would you want 100 people? Because maybe you're going to do something for your database. Maybe you're going to give them weekly updates, doing it live, answering their questions. Or what about this? Why don't you do a virtual social event or a virtual happy hour? I'm seeing that pop up everywhere, man. All over the place. Right? You're stuck in, you're whatever, and it doesn't it bring your favorite beverage and we're gonna all log in. Here's my link, and I'm gonna answer your questions, and we're going to have camaraderie and friendship and community online. Okay, so you could do that in uh, uh, Facebook. So the problem with Facebook Lives is you can't be all interactive. With the Zoom, if you go to that next level. 15 bucks, everybody can have a video and you can be interacting and talking to each other. It's so cool. There's others out there, but check that out. So moving on, just so you know, we're here, uh, you know, we're Home Connect America, WBNL Coaching. I'm definitely going to be doing some content um, and we're going to be posting it to our group uh, through coaching and through our company on how to actually do that. Because I think a lot of people are afraid of technology. So we're going to have tutorials on this, uh, you know, and, and have, help people understand what do we mean by a virtual showing and how do you conduct a virtual listing presentation? Um, you know, how do you do these market updates and town halls? Love that word town halls or neighborhood, you know, events. There's so many things you can do right now to stay connected. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we covered that. And honestly, the last thing I want to do right here, because I want to, we're going to jump in, Matt, and talk about things you can do while you're at home. I just want to continue to say, do the right thing, you know, be the leader. How can you help someone out? How do you help a neighbor out? How do you make sure people like uh, senior citizens who, I love seeing the stores, Matt, have, 
you know, an hour, uh, open, hour open, but you know what, can you help them? Can you, could you do something for a neighbor who's even afraid to leave the house? It's in that, who, who's a little bit more at risk, but of course now the statistics are showing everyone's really at risk. There's, you know, this whole reality of if you're over 70, you're do, you know, you better be careful. Well, there's a bunch of data coming out that you don't have to be 70 to be able to have to go to the hospital and, and use a respirator. Okay. Or, or even die. Okay. So we have to be careful. So we're in this together, right? We need to be the leaders. It's a great article from housing wire that I've included into the show notes today. And then I'll, I'll save these last comments. Uh, Cause I know we're going to talk about next segment about staying balanced and connected, right? right. How do you, how do you have good, uh, what do you do in that time and find that balance at home to not be all work? We don't want to be, I've seen some crazy memes with the shining all work and no play. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. A dull boy. The shining we like, don't hey, want to do that. So, all right. So I mean, that's you know, our bottom, bottom line. Really, is about being empathetic. Empathy is what this empathy. is going to be all about. And you know, it's really interesting. I've been watching this and kind of seeing this over the last week or so. Uh, you know how online communication is very hard. It's very easy to misread, and, and a lot of times, very hard to understand. Try your very best to um, take a step back while you're reading something and put try to put yourself in their shoes. Because I think so often people are taking things the wrong way or they are misunderstanding what's being communicated. Because everyone is in their own space and thinking about it from their own frame of uh, reference and their own mind. So you really have to be the leader, like Jan was saying, you need to be the one that's ahead of the game here and uh, leading the group as opposed to following or getting caught up in the rhetoric. Because, you know, you be the calm, stable and empathetic voice, you are going to absolutely be the person that becomes the trusted advisor as opposed to the person that's just spewing. <laughs> Don't spew. <laughs> well, and then honestly, isn't that uh, it's empathy and compassion? Yeah, and it's just like trying to be, you know, and, and, and it, it, there's just so much going on. So everybody is just but this is what we have to do. It starts with us. And this whole piece of uh, Matt, you're doing it. I, kudos to you. You're doing this at night. I don't have the energy to do it. night. I do my thing in the morning. But it is about finding some personal time to get out or to exercise and, and to do that type of stuff. So, so hey, I have closed every ring for the past week. Well, good for you because I, I I have to check that out. I might be doing that, but probably not. So I have to be a little better at just finding that time and not thinking I have to be constantly on and handling things because I want to stay on top of it. But you're right. Got to find the balance. That's All right. right, guys, that's it for our real estate reality update for this week. Let's go talk to Matt about some wandering zen inside. Come take my hand and see the world around you. Time is right, just let the light surround you. And step by step, you feel it coming alive. The feeling deep down inside. The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings End, we're going to continue our series on how to stay in, but yet get out and do a little wandering, you know, with everyone kind of morphing into the shelter at home uh, mode of the coronavirus. Uh, uh, outbreak here across the globe actually you know we're gonna have to stay safe and sane and last night I had the opportunity to go on my walk and I go on walk every night just to kind of free my brain up and get the cobwebs out and it was awesome last night because it was raining and it was uh uh you know I, I you know how often do you get to go out and walk in the rain and I was like I'm walking every night so I'm gonna do this and it was awesome and I called Jan and we were talking about the the uh the the podcast and it's just you know it's fascinating what's what's going on in the world today and I think that Staying balanced and being able to keep a little bit of your normal routine and being able to exercise and to get out is going to be vitally important in what happens over the next few months. Because I really believe that, you know, we have all of the the financial things that are going on right now and all of the, the worries about our family and all of the health things are going on. But I'm, I really do believe that beyond the actual outbreak itself, one of the big problems we're going to see across the globe actually is states of depression setting in and people yeah. really getting mental, you know, having mental issues because of what's going on. This is talking about PTSD in a whole different way than, you know, you think of as in a military type of situation. People are going to be, I mean, when you are separated literally from uh, the rest of the outside world, it's going to affect your psyche. So I think it's really important that we do try to stay as balanced as possible. 
you know, thank goodness there is the internet and the ability to communicate online and, and the ability to actually share ideas and thoughts. I mean, think back, this 20 years ago, if this would have happened and you were actually told to stay at home, you would have whoever you were with, your TV, and your neighbor, and, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, it would be very, very different. So we're very fortunate in the sense that we're going to be able to connect in a way we weren't before. So there's going to be interaction, even though you're going to be away from it, you're going to be able to do a little bit more than you were, you were going to before. So I think, you know, and like I had mentioned earlier when we did the setup that, you know, it's just been fun to watch what people have been posting online. So, you know, what parents are doing with their kids. I, I'm enjoying these stories, you know. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. My wife's a school teacher and and they are, you know, teaching from home. There's been a lot of talk about how they can do, uh, you know, outside of the school setting because, you know, you don't want to get you, the the school day isn't going to turn into or shouldn't turn into, in my opinion, anyway, um, you know, social media hour where kids are just sitting there chatting with each other. Yeah. They don't do that in school, do they? No, you work during the school hour. But there's there there you know a lot of the parents are getting together, you know, almost like online play dates type of things where you can share things and start talking to each other and things like that. So I think that's going to be, you know, vitally important. And things are going to change. I mean, all I, I, you know, I'm a Disney fan. If anyone knows who watches the show, and it's so interesting. I watch a lot of vloggers who really what they do is just say go to the parks every day and they take video and they show the new merchandise and the new food and all. All that kind of stuff. Well, you know, they're literally out of business right now, but I'm seeing them, a lot of them anyway, repurpose. So like today I saw yeah. someone say, hey, you, you can't get to the park. Let's all experience it's a small world today on, you know, the, whatever it is. So you can, you know, get a virtual ride through. And, and a lot of that type of, type of stuff is happening across all different entertainment platforms. And what I wanted to talk about today, just real briefly, you know that I am a huge advocate and fan of the national parks. Uh, and I, I happened to go on the national park website yesterday. Which, by the way, if you are at all a, uh, a outdoors person or wilderness lover or national park lover, that is like talk about going down the rabbit hole because there's so many opportunities on there. And I I don't usually when I go to those uh, sites go to their multimedia you know videos and all of that section, but oh my gosh, there is a plethora of things that you Great can. Word. Yeah, yeah, you can watch and enjoy on the national parks and in the show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com, episode 111, or at wanderingbutatlost.com. I have posted probably a half a dozen or so, or maybe even more than that, a dozen or so videos of like Experience Yosemite and Experience Yellowstone, and they're short 10, 15 minute videos that are they, they take you right out there. They're beautiful. They're done for the most part by the National Park Service. And it gives you just a, a step outside. But if you go deeper into these National Park websites, you'll get an opportunity to even go on hikes. And it, it, it's it's really a great Like way. a virtual hike? Virtual hikes. It's really wow. cool to get out there and uh, and check a lot of that out because you're going to be able to experience some outdoors stuff. Now, what I got to thinking about, and there are some parks in the United States that my sweet pea and I have not been to, and we've been talking about going to them. So what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks is start really looking in and doing some real investigations on some of these parks. And when we are all free to go and, and ready to go, we're going to get out there and do some of these parks. I'll name a couple of them right up hand. I have always wanted to go to Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. It's not on the beaten path anywhere. I'm a cave, I'm a spelunker. I love going in caves. We have never been to that cave, and it is a place that is not only going to be on the list, but we are actually going to do it. Uh, Roosevelt, uh, Teddy Roosevelt State Park in North Dakota, another place that you can't really get to, so it's never been something that we've actually done. Uh, we're going to go there because it looks absolutely fascinating. So there are things that we're going to be doing some uh, exploring and some, you know, discovering on by going to the website and you know checking out other people's blogs and 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 uh, vlogs to see what's all what it's all about and what we can do as far as building our next big national park road trip vacation. So there's a lot of things you can do like that just to kind of plan what's going on. I am always, of course, an advocate of the California parks, Yosemite, the Redwood National Park, uh, uh, Sequoia and Kings Canyon. Those parks have got some great information on the uh, on the websites as well to get out and do a little bit of uh, uh, exploring before you go. And then the, almost every park has got a webcam. So I'm going to post a link to, I found a site that actually had a link to all of the webcams on one page. So I'm going to put that up there for you to go out there. You know, web webcams are, are fun if you are really into something. If you're you're not, it's like, what am I, I'm watching this leaf blow? Okay. But at mm -hmm. least you can see what's happening in the park right now. There's a 
couple in particular that I loved. There was a webcam that is under the water from the Channel Islands National Park, and it is the most fascinating, beautiful webcam because you're seeing the kelp flow back. And talk about a moment of zen. Mm -hmm. If you need to have a little meditative moment, uh, go to this web uh, webcam. I have it actually on the, the in yeah. the show notes, and just watch what's going on under the sea. Very very cool. And then there's another one that I have posted up there that is an eagle's nest. And uh. at some point, we're going to be having a little eaglet uh, hatching. So very cool to kind of stay in contact with that. Just something to do. Make it a part of your routine, see what's happening with the bald eagles uh, on any given day. So, so much to do as far as exploring the world and exploring nature, not to mention just all of the documentaries and everything that you can find on YouTube, not about just the national parks, but just about nature throughout the world. And also one thing I wanted to talk about, which I think is so fascinating, I, you know, we were talking the other day about how just a short interruption in what we uh, do to nature as a world just in the last few weeks of everything kind of slowly starting shutting down has already started to change what's happening in nature. And it's fascinating. Meaning like not a people trampling it all, I will all over the place. That. The CO2 emissions, everything uh, that we are kind of shutting down right now is making a difference. In Italy, the canals in Venice, which are like some of the oh, dirtiest in the world are Sorry. already starting to clear up a little bit because of all the, the lack of boat traffic all over the place. And now I, I saw it, I didn't see the picture, I'm gonna really look for this, is that you're actually being able to see down into, there's some clarity into the water enough where you could actually see some fish. You can fish. see fish, I, they should, I saw a picture of that. It was like what? green and you could see fish. Absolutely amazing. Have I, you been there? I, oh yeah, I have. Yeah. And it's, okay. yeah, it's, I, 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 I would love to go back there. It's a wonderful place. It's, it's a fast, it, well, everything about, Venice is fascinating to me because, yeah. you know, they have so many things they're up against, you know, with the, the, um, the rising of sea levels and all of that. But anyway, it's going to be interesting to see if we're down for a couple months, just to see how that happens. Now, unfortunately, because, you know, we have done such a bad job of taking care of our environment, it won't take long to whip that back into the horrible shape it was before. But you know what? <laughs> this is giving the planet a little time to breathe. And you know what? If there is an opportunity that comes from anything, I'm going to fight it. And there is a silver lining right there. Uh, and maybe we might learn something along the way here. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, from an environmental standpoint, that we Maybe we'll learn something during this that maybe uh, we'll get some of the deniers onto the uh, the side of, you know, maybe we are doing something to hurt this planet. So a lot of things you can learn about the environment as well. So, uh, you know, there's so many opportunities for you to get up and get out and do things while you're staying at home. General Brian, what's going to be your way of meditation and your way of balance, you know, during this? Have you really thought that through? Yeah, it, honestly, it's the, it's the routine that I occasionally get myself into and I'm um, need to get back to it because I haven't been. I've been really busy. It's to t it's the mornings for me. It's yeah. doing a guided meditation. Uh, it's getting out and just taking, get, I did a little bit this morning walking um, to just appreciate like early in the morning before things are crazy. It's going to be like that. I wanted to share one thing you were talking about. I discovered when I was going through for something for the office, looking for music to play in the background, I came across some brilliant uh, things that were set to music that are just shots of the park. So the background, so in the background, having music going on instead of the news or something like that with, and I watched it. I just had, you could get yourself as to your point, instead of having to have anybody talking or narrating, it's just nothing but uh, one park after another, all the beautiful shots played to some great music. What great background stuff to have up. Right. There's so so much out there, you know, it's uh it's actually mind boggling, mm -hmm. but you knew it was there anyway, but you know, now it's like, Hey, <laughs> I, I also want to get caught up on, I want to get caught up on not just work related things, but reading and, and other things that I've been wanting to explore or personal development type things that are, you know, not just about it's enough already to, it's a full-time job staying on top of everything and handling and running a company and doing all those things. But there's going to be an opportunity for, I think for all of us to, tap into maybe some creative stuff, some other things that we haven't done. You know, I mean, it's going to be interesting because I think you and I were talking about it, Matt. There's going to be the group of people who will figure out, wow, there's been, they'll see the opportunity to expand, develop deeper relationships and use all these things that we've been talking about for the last couple episodes. And there'll be the people who will just have a really hard time with this. Sure. You know, just speak when you think about it. Right. But the, I, I, I I'm completely alone. Yeah. And, but you don't have to be. With, you know, uh, so anyway, we, we carry on. We, we, that's our thing here, right? We stay calm, we adapt and carry on. Yeah, that's right.
Uh, so remember, as always, be forever wandering but not lost, whether you have to stay in. And if you do have to stay in, you can still get out. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for another WBNL Wandering Minute Lost podcast. This was episode 111. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Bryan, I like how in the span of one week, we have gone to really focusing on how this was like, in a, a way, like the uh, crash and of uh, the market back, uh, back in 08, 07, 08, uh, and how to how, you know what? No, it's not. It's not quite like that. It's, it's going to be- at all different. like that depending upon what goes on and we are going to be able to keep you up to date weekly and you know what if it happens early or more recent or more frequently than that then we'll give you some wbl podcast breaking news segments well. <laughs> that's right and i like it i like the whole piece on continuing to there's so many motivational things to just focus on regarding uh you know not being addicted to the news cycle and the latest greatest stuff you'll you know it's changing but you can check into that later and and do some of these other things that you chatted about today, Matt. So go check out the links in the show notes today to get some inspiration, to get the links about staying updated on the real estate housing market side of the house, but also find that balance. That's what we're all about here at WBNL podcast and uh, coaching and what we're doing in our company is you've got to find the balance. We're going to stay connected. We're going to get through this together and we're going to be better for it. That's what I truly believe every day. I concur. So remember, everyone, uh, be a wanderer, but be safe. That's right.